This is Math 99. We are doing the second part of Section 11.1 right now, dealing with these with these systems. And uh, if you recall from last time, we we threw a couple of vocabulary words in here: independent, inconsistent, and dependent systems. So just to remind you, um, systems that are independent, it means the lines cross once. Uh, basically, when when they're linear, it means there's one solution. When they are independent, inconsistent, sorry, um, that means that they, they never cross, they're parallel lines, so there's no solution, you can put the empty set for that, and when they're the dependent, it means they're the same line, there's an infinite number of solutions. Okay, so we've been graphing these, and uh, if you did the graphing, you start to notice that graphing is a, not an exact science when it comes to finding them. You know, if, it's, if the answer is like one-seventh, it's really hard to, to graph that unless you zoom in really tight. So we're going to talk about some algebraic ways to, uh, to deal with this. And one of the things we can do is uh, a method that's called substitution. And if you look at actually this one that's on the right, notice that this top is already solved for x. Like this top equation tells us what x is. x is y plus 3. So if that's what x is, what that means is I can substitute it into the x spot in the other equation. In other words, if I, if I rewrite the second equation, 4 equals 3 times x minus 2y, um, well, what's x? x is y plus 3. So I'm going to take that and substitute it into there. It's going to take the place of the x because they're equal to each other, the equivalent. Now here's what's great. Here's what this just did is, is it eliminated one of the variables. Right? I, I only have this in terms of y, so now I can solve that. I know how to solve that and get a value for y. So it's a little bit of algebra now. Distribute that 3 into there. Combine up some like terms. 3y minus 2y is y. Subtract 9 from both sides. Looks like y equals negative 5. And now if I know what y is, I can plug it back in and it will tell me what x is. So x would equal y. We'll substitute the negative 5 in for the y. Negative 5 plus 3, which is negative 2. Oops, sorry. And x equals negative 2. So my solution, I can write it this way, or I can write it as the ordered pair x is negative 2 when y is negative 5. Now that worked really well for me here because I had x all alone. Like I knew what x was, and so then I could plug it into the other equation. So uh, with that in mind, looking back at this, this, this one that's over on the left, um, I don't have it solved for anything yet, but I can remedy that. I can take care of that. I can get one of the um, variables alone and then plug it into the other equation. So I notice that like this top equation, negative x plus y equals negative 5. Um, how about I get y all alone? I'm just going to add x to both sides. So notice what I've done is I've, I've just rearranged the terms of the first equation. It's still the same relationship. It's just written in a different way. So I know what y is. y is x minus 5. So I can substitute that into the y spot in the other equation. So the sec that second equation was 2x minus 5 times y equals 1. Well, what's y? y is x minus 5. And now it's just some algebra to solve. Uh, be careful, this is a negative 5 we're distributing into here. So it's minus 5x. Negative 5 times negative 5 is positive 25. Combine up some like terms. Negative 3x plus 25 is 1. Subtract 25 from both sides. Negative 3x is negative 24 divided by negative 3. Uh, negative 24 divided by negative 3 is 8. So when x is 8, I can take that, plug it back in, and figure out what y is. So let me plug it back into that first equation. I can plug it into either equation. They'll both give me the same answer. Again, I substituted the 8 into the, the x spot. So negative x would be negative 8. Add 8 to both sides. Looks like y is 3 when x is 8. So I can write my answer that way. I can write it as the ordered pair 8, 3. All right, so that is a great technique. And uh, it's called substitution because we're, we're substituting in values. So now I want to show you another 
uh, another technique for solving systems that is, I think, super, super clever. Um, so as I look at this one, I could, I could do these using substitution. Um, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do another thing. And what I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take advantage of, the, of, of a relationship. And notice if I had um, A plus B equals C. Right, so that's saying if I add these two things together, I get that thing. And I could also say uh, D plus E equals F. Yeah? So A plus B is C, D plus E is F. I could actually add those equations. In other words, I could say A plus D plus B plus E equals C plus F. <laughs> I should have written F. And those are still equivalent. Hopefully that makes sense. This is that. So these two pieces are that. This is that. So those two pieces are that. So again, the implication here is I can add equations together and get a big equation that's still equivalent. Here's what's great. If I look at this first set of equations, I notice I have an x and I have a negative x. So if I were to add those together, they'd cancel out. The goal in solving equations is to eliminate variables to make it a simpler thing to solve. Then you can plug it back in and find the other variables. So I'm just going to add these together. So let's see, x plus negative x, that's 0. x's are gone. 2y plus y is 3y. Negative 1 plus 3 is 2. So y must equal 2 thirds. And if I know that y equals 2 thirds, I can plug it in to either of these equations to figure out what x is. They'll both give me the same answer. So I'll plug it into this second equation. It looks like less work. Uh, I might be wrong there. Negative x plus y. I'm going to substitute the y value, 2 thirds. So I'm going to subtract 2 thirds from both sides. Negative x equals uh, 2 and 1 third. Multiply both sides by negative 1, that means that x equals negative 2 and 1 third. There's my solution right there. Notice my solution is both the x value and the y value. I could write it that way. I could write it as an ordered pair. All right. So with that in mind, let's take a look at this, this next one. So if I just add together, none of the variables are going to be eliminated. I mean, the, the constant gets eliminated, but that doesn't help me. My goal is to eliminate one of the variables. So I think that uh, if I just add at this point, it's not going to do anything for me. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to dream a little bit. Like, this is a 3x. What would I want this be, this to be, in order to um, have those eliminate? And so if I can make this a negative 3, I could add them together and x's would be gone. So how about I just do this? How about I just multiply that e second equation? I'm just going to write this as like the second equation, equation 2, times negative 3. I'm going to multiply negative 3 by that second equation. So everything there gets multiplied by negative 3, like both sides. So let me see what happens. I get uh, negative 3x. Negative 3 times negative 2 is positive 6y. Negative 3 times 11 is negative 33. Now notice I multiplied both sides by negative 3. I didn't change the relationship. I just changed the form. But now that I have that, now I can add that to that equation 1. So I dreamt a little. I, <laughs> my dream manifested. And now I can do my addition. Negative 3x uh, plus 3x, that's 0. I wanted that to happen. 6y plus 5y is 11y. Negative 33 plus negative 11, negative 44. Divide by 11, it looks like y is negative 4. And I'm going to take it and plug it back in to figure out what x is in, in some of my equations. So uh, I'll just grab this bottom one. So negative 2 times negative 4 is positive 8. I can write my answer that way. I can write it as an ordered pair. Great. That's how this technique works. Uh, it's super clever. I'm, I'm, I, I like it a lot. So let's take a look at this one. Um, dream a little. What if I wanted to get rid of y? Well, I just want that to be a 7. So one of the things I could do if I wanted to eliminate y is multiply this bottom equation by 7. 
both sides, right? And just if I do that, that was supposed to be an arrow. Equation 2 times 7. Notice I get everything gets multiplied by 7. So 21x plus 7y. People sometimes forget to multiply this side by it as well. You've got to do that. Negative 140. And then from there, you'd add them together. You could solve for x. Just so you know, if you wanted to get rid of x, you could. It might be a little more work, but you could do it. Think about how. Um, I'm going to let you finish the rest of this problem. The solution, if you find it, is uh, negative 6, negative 2. Let me check your work. Okay, so last problem I asked about, like, you could cancel out x, you can cancel out whatever you want. Um, because I wanted you to think about, what if it's not a simple, like, multiply, like, 2 and 5, if I want to get rid of x, or 3 and 10, if I want to get rid of y. Well, before I've just multiplied one of the equations by something, how about I just multiply uh, one equation by something and the other equation by something else? So in this one, if I want to get rid of x, I might multiply the top equation by 5. 15y equals 16 times 5, 80. And multiply this one by, well, if this is a 10, I want this to be a negative 10. So multiply this one by negative 2. So uh, 5x times negative 2, negative 10x. Negative 10 times 2 is 20y. 30 times negative 2 is negative 60. Notice when I add those together, Notice when I add those together, my x's will drop out. I know what y is. I can plug it back in to get x. Uh, the answer to this one isn't very pretty. Um, just think about the techniques. Um, on this one, I want to give you a little tool to deal with when there's fractions here. Notice I have uh, the fractions of 3 and 6 uh, in the denominator, 2 and 4 in the denominator. First thing I would do with this system is just get rid of those fractions. Um, in other words, I know I can multiply an equation by something. So if I look at this top one, uh, my denominators are 3 and 6. How about I just multiply everything in there by 6? So notice uh, 6 times a third boop, boop, is 2, so that would be a 2x. 6 times 6, uh, 6 divided by 6 is 1, so that would be plus y. 6 times 3 is 18. It's the same, it's the same line. I've just written it in a simpler way. The second equation, 2 and 4, let's see, those both go into 4, so I'm going to multiply everything by 4. Uh, 4 times a half, so that would be a 2x. 4 times 1. Uh, I'm sorry, 4 divided by 4 is 1, so that would be negative y. And 4 times 1 is 1. And then I would go to use my techniques to solve this system. And on this system, I'd just add them together right away and y's will drop out. So you can keep going to solve that one. And if you, uh, if you do do it, you will see that the answer is uh, 5.57. Okay, two more I want to do, and then I will be done. So I want to solve the system. I'm going to dream a little bit. I'm going to multiply. I want these x's gone. So I'm going to multiply this bottom equation by negative 2. And so notice if I do that, do it in this color, that would make this a negative 2. That would make this a negative 4. That would make this a negative 26. And if I add these together, uh, negative 2 that's a zero, that's a zero, and then I get 18 minus 26, negative 8. I end up with zero equals negative 8. Here's what happened. I started with a, a something, I made an argument, I ended up with an equation that is never true. Zero does not equal negative 8. What this means is there's no solution. What this means is this is an inconsistent system. These would be parallel lines. Okay, and uh, this last one, same idea. Uh, let's say I want to get rid of x's here. I'm going to multiply this one by negative 3. So that would give me negative 3x, negative 9y, 
and negative 6. And notice if I multiply, uh, add these ones together, I get 0 equals 0. So just like here, uh, I argued and I got a false statement, inconsistent. It's never true. If I get something that's always true, variables drop out, 0 equals 0 is always true. That means there's an infinite number of solutions. They're the same line. It is a dependent system. Hey, post questions in the forum. Let me know uh, what questions you have and give this, uh, give this some good practice time.